Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lori Wilson. I'm an anchor with Wish TV in Indianapolis. Thanks so much for joining us here for the Youth Speak Out Summit. You guys are now seeing us across the world. How do you guys feel about that? Your voices will be heard. This is really a unique opportunity to pull together students from across central Indiana districts so that we can hear from you guys about the challenges what we're doing right, but also what you guys need to have a better education, those things that might be standing in your way. Um, I just heard a cell phone. This is a digital world, right? We're always all connected. As a matter of fact, right now, this is being broadcast across the world. And so what we wanna start this summit with is the role of social media. It's so different from when a lot of the adults here were in high school. Uh, we didn't have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vine, whatever else you guys use. Um, so, so we wanna start with talking about social media, how you guys use it in education. Is it a benefit? Is it a distraction? What have you guys found to, when it comes to social media and how it's impacted what you get in the classroom? Don't everybody raise your hands at once. I'm gonna start with the closest if I don't see it. Okay, there you go. Tell me your name, stand up, tell me where you're from, and then your comment. Um, my name is Micah Harvey and I go to Southport High School. And um, whenever my teachers use social media in the classroom, it's usually to get us like a message across, like they'll put an assignment on there or, yeah, basically just an assi assignment. Mm -hmm. Like they'll tell you to study for a test. Don't forget to do that because like our generation, we look at that stuff when we have downtime, like when we're in our bed getting ready for sleep, we scroll, scroll through our Instagram or through our Twitter timeline or something like that. So it's just like, it's a nice, easy way to get the point across to us because we'll see it and we won't forget. <laughs> okay, so you use it to get assignments. Do you guys carry your social media, your devices at school? Yeah. Are they ever a distraction to the learning process? Yes, no, never, okay. Do you guys interact with each other on social media in school to the point where it is a distraction? Have you guys found that social media amongst your peer group is a distraction? And if so, how? Um, I wouldn't say it's so much of a distraction during school as it is outside of school when you're trying to get work done at home or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So you get home and you get comfortable and you think, you know, school's over, so, you know, it's my time for me. Um, but, no, not so much during school that it's a distraction when you're just on it all the time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right here. Just keep your hand raised so the microphone will know where to get, where to come. Well, I can't lie. Sometimes you're in school, maybe you're in a boring lecture, a lecture, or a long lecture, and my homie, he Snapchat me. So I'm going to Snapchat back. Oh, my goodness, I'm in such a boring class. So sometimes it can become a distraction where you keep on Snapchatting or keep on Instagramming or keep on getting on Twitter, looking at a tweet, mm -hmm. trying to get some entertainment so we'll get distracted from the lecture or something. Have you used it to make presentations? Have you used it to enhance your learning experience, Jalen? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I wouldn't say, well, I have actually used it one time as an assignment, like, because I'm in a journalism class and we had to pull up, like, an uh, event that happened where a confrontation had happened and a lot of stuff goes on through social media, and a lot of that happens outside of school, but with social media, it comes into the school, and then it happens in school, so I did a project on that and how it affects us and when it goes on, and I used Instagram for my example and stuff that goes on and comments and stuff that happen and when people post things and stuff. Mm -hmm. And do you guys find, um, because it is anonymous, that people, well, it can be anonymous, that people are pretty emboldened by the fact that they've got this platform that everybody can use? And is it, I, I'm gonna use the Castleton example, I don't know if I can do that, my producers will tell me, but there was recently uh, a fight at Castleton, 
And a lot of the comments were, well, that was incited on social media. Do you guys know anything about that? Yeah. So before the incident at Castleton, um, like the fight was promoted on uh, Twitter. How and is a fight promoted? I'm just curious, because in my day, <laughs> it was the heavyweight champion of the world is going to meet with this person. So how is a fight promoted? So like the teens that were like involved, they just like were going back and forth on Twitter mm -hmm. and like they were just getting all rallied up and they all said that they were going to meet at Castleton. And so like they all promoted it. So lots of people came and that was the result. And so were you aware of it? as it was happening, like before the actual fight? Yes. Like, and so how do you respond to that? Like, did you know people that said, I'm going up there? No, I, I personally don't know anybody that like went up there, but you can just like see by Twitter who's like going and who's going to be involved. And I just think that it's so easy for someone to just hide behind a computer screen or hide behind a keyboard and say, you know, bold terms and just be um, just be out of character on social media, and I think that's just what starts most of the incidents here, mm -hmm. not only at Castleton, but in other places across Indiana. Because mm -hmm. the communication isn't direct. Yeah. It's not face-to-face. -face. You can't even hear inflection, Yeah. right? So you have no idea how this is coming across. You're left free to interpret it. So what would you guys like, okay, you have another comment? Go ahead before I ask this. So I was actually in the Castleton area when that actually happened. No. So it was. Did you know it was going to happen? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, but just being in that area is kind of scary, you know, because um, lots of events like that happen across Indiana on a daily basis. But it was just crazy in that area, and we had to go past them all to get onto the, you know, the highway. So it's just it's scary being in that situation because it could be anywhere, anywhere that you can plan to go. Yeah, and you don't know how far it's going to escalate. Right. You don't know whether people are going to be throwing punches. Yeah. Whether there's going to be violence, a weapon involved. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Uh, I would just like to say, like, because of social media, you are, you do have that opportunity to avoid those situations, mm -hmm. too. Like he said that, um, that it's happening all across Indiana. Well, if you didn't have social media, you wouldn't be able to know where to go away from it yeah. and how to avoid it. So, I mean, in that aspect, social media is definitely a plus side. Mm -hmm. I think that's, you bring up a really good point. So you do know, if I don't want to be involved, I'm going to downtown Circle Center Mall. Yes. Just to piggyback off what she was saying, social media basically is our, our news, our wish TV. Yes. Just to know, Thank like. Thank you for that. <laughs> 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 like, if, before I check, like, the news, before a two hour delay, I check Twitter because somebody gonna say it on Twitter two hour delay. Or if somebody gonna fight, I know where to stay away. You know, that's just our news tonight yeah. right now. So. And that's why as journalists, uh, those of you who wanna be future journalists, a, a big part of our job now is actually making sure we tweet stories that are out there because we know that's where people go, right? You can get it right away, yes. Um, referring back to what the last three people have said, I wanna say that social media has been kind of what we look towards, like what he said, when referring back to social media, we had a two hour delay last week, I believe. Mm -hmm. And before getting up, and getting up at 5.30, we don't want to get up and turn on a bright television, we look at our phones instead. So yeah. I was unsure whether we had a two hour delay. So I asked people on Instagram because we saw a, a million, twi twi not Twitters, we had saw a million posts of two hour delay posts and how mm -hmm. happy people were. So I, of course, was able to go back to sleep without having to get out of bed. So social media has a benefit, it just depends on how you use it. <laughs> I love that. So let, let's go ahead and, and let's ask this question while, while we brought up that point. What would you guys like educators to know about how you think social media can be used to enhance your educational experience? Mm -hmm. I know, um, some schools, like for their assignments, might be. So last night, uh, President Obama did a State of Union address. So maybe you could have tweeting while you watch the State of Union address, you know, and have points for that. I know some schools do that. Mm -hmm. So especially while you watch big events like history events or stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Any other ideas about how we can harness the power of social media and bring it into the classroom? Mm -hmm. Um. Stay away from like emails because I know kids, teens don't really use their emails like that. Mm -hmm. Like, if you send me a remind one on one text, 
I'm going to get a text before I get an email. So Got it. That's, that'll be so ways to make sure people know where they're going, what they're supposed to be doing, what the assignment is, what time we're meeting. Yes. We're just going to start putting microphones in faces in a minute. Yeah. Um, our generation has pretty much been able to thrive off of social media. Um, I just want to say that within the classroom, social media has kind of been something that we look towards. We have Chromebooks at Warren now, so social media has been there for us to do PowerPoints and projects and work on documents. Mm -hmm. It's become something prominent within the classroom, and mm -hmm. so it's been able to help us. Also, I feel like it's hurting us because we aren't able to use books as well as any other resources like the library. We use online textbooks and online books instead of getting that feel for the actual book, is, which has been around for a while. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, right here. <coughs> I can add on to what she said because at Ben Davis University, we have Chromebooks as well. Mm -hmm. And I really like them because I can turn in like three or four assignments at the same time mm -hmm. at home. So I can just send an email to them and my assignment's turned in. Yeah, and so. you guys don't have necessarily those heavy book bags that we used to have. Those are a thing of the past, right? Everybody's healthy. No, okay. Yeah, we've got two. Oh, sorry. We can start wherever. Um, like, our, I wouldn't say our book bags aren't heavy. I would say that they're, like, more heavy than, like, what you guys had, because we get, like, a textbook for each of our classes, and we have, like, seven do. classes. Okay. And, like, that can, I'm sorry, that can ge get a little, like, nerve-wracking to carry like eight books around. Yeah, classrooms. I'm with you, I know, it, it, it definitely is. I, I'm, are there any schools that have gone to um, like strictly e-books yet? Not yet? Um, the social media aspect, uh, using your own personal social media to, to communicate with your teachers may not be the most appropriate way, so like your Instagram or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but they have My Big Campus, which is a form of like a, a, a Facebook profile but you can, you know, be friends with your teachers on there, and then you're assigned to a class in there. So uh, I know that we use something called Echo, so you're assigned to a certain class, so I'm an American Studies, so if it's just assigned to American Studies, I see all the assignments, everything that we're doing for that day with the daily agenda. Um, that way I'm prepared for all that without using my own personal social media account. Yes, without the possibility of getting into any sort of trouble, right? How many of you guys are friends with your teachers on Facebook, Twitter? Okay, all right, one more comment. I really like seeing our teachers and coaches on Twitter and stuff because they not only post like positive quotes to kind of get us through the day or like reminders about assignments, but it's really just a way you don't even have to like communicate back, but you kind of get reminders and responses that you need to keep going through the day and even through finals and stuff like that. Okay, very good, very good. One last comment and then we're gonna move to the next um, I thought it was like useful, like when I was applying to college and stuff, like there's a common app where like I sent it to like seven or eight different colleges all at once instead of like hand mailing them. Nice. And then there's also a thing we use called parchment where we send our transcripts, so it made everything a lot easier. Wow, have yeah. you heard back yet? Yeah, uh, I got into a few. Woohoo! congratulations, Thank you. that's great. Okay, so it was you actually brought up a good point um, when you talked about kind of communicating with your teachers and making sure that everything is uh, above board. So let's talk a little bit about communications and relationships, right? Because that's a big part of your day, even though everybody is down in their phone, we still have interpersonal relationships. Um, so the question was posed, how do you guys express yourselves in a constructive manner um, in your relationships, say when there is a disagreement or when there is something that um, you guys are standing on the opposite side of someone else on. And, and we bring this up because the environment that you learn in is very important, right? And so it's, it's much easier to focus on school and on your homework and on your assignments when you're not worried about some sort of disagreement with someone or somebody waiting for you at three o'clock. Right? Okay. Um, I would like to say that I advise, were you talking about relationships like boyfriend and girlfriend? However you'd like to interpret it. I feel like Remembering that, that your mom is watching. No. <laughs> um, I feel like that if you go to school with the same person that you may go out with, that's your boyfriend or your girlfriend, or even someone that you may talk to on that level, I feel like you shouldn't talk to somebody that goes to school with you because it's a big distraction within your whole mm. education. You can go, y'all can be texting or something. You can see your boyfriend with the next person, and you catch a whole attitude, and it ruins your whole day. 
and you just completely shut down. I know a lot of people like that. A lot of my friends are like that. So I say, like, I advise, like, not to date anybody that goes to your high school. Interesting. An interesting thought. Where were you when I was in high school? <laughs> Could have told me I'd be the president by now. Any, any other comments about that? Kind of how to guide relationships and how to express yourself in a way that you feel heard without necessarily infringing on anyone else's freedoms. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, we've got one right here and then we'll get back to you. Um, the way that I've made my relationships better is I've come to an understanding that neither party is right. Um, neither way, when you come to a disagreement, I pretty much say that not my way is just right, your, your way is not wrong. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand that and that'll make the disagreement better because you guys are both coming to a agreement. Sure, you can agree to disagree. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's basically what I was going to say. You have to agree to disagree and just be assertive and not be aggressive mm -hmm. like in any relationship. Yeah, assertive and aggressive are two different things, yeah. right? Yes, right here, and then we'll come to you. Basically, the way I look at it is that you have to kind of be mature about it because no matter where you go, no matter what high school you go to, there's always going to be somebody that you don't get along with and you have to make the mature choice to say, okay, well, I'm gonna stay away from that person. I'm not gonna you know, get on social media. I'm not going to instigate the issue. And you know, if you have to like change classes or something like that, that can be steps that your school can take to make that situation for you better. And like I said, you're not gonna always get along with everyone. So you have to be, make the mature decision to you know, make the mature decision to stay away from them and not instigate it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, like me personally, like with my friendships, it's more have it's having more of like a negative um, impact on us. Like social media, post, social media is supposed to like connect us more, but mm -hmm. it's making me and my friends more disconnected. Like mm -hmm. we'll be at lunch together, but we'd be on our phones the whole entire time. And it's like the whole, like when we're together, we're supposed to be like laughing and having fun, not hiding behind a piece of metal. That's true. That's true. Do you? Uh, yes. Let's get some comments over here. Um, when you have a disagreement with someone, I want to say the big factor is communication. In order, like the saying goes, a closed mouth don't get fed. So if you're going to keep your mouth closed on a disagreement, no one will know the situation. With a teacher, a best friend, siblings, mom, dad, you have to sit down and talk to them. Stay after class, have a conversation. Don't send a text, call them, let them hear your voice. You have to communicate with someone and show them, tell them how you feel because in order that, then nothing else is going to get uh, resolved. Yeah, and, and have you ever found that you guys can both be looking at the sky and you say it's blue and somebody else can say it's purple and they're no, I'm right, right? Right. Sometimes you guys have to define the language even within communications. What does that mean to you? You say, what does that mean? Yes. Um, are you moving? Okay. Um, to piggyback on what she was saying, I feel like you have to be careful in who you talk to about your problems because oh. you, I mean, I, I'm because I have friends like who like to instigate sometimes. So like you have to pick and choose like who you want to express your feelings to because you can express yourself to the wrong person and then they'll go and tell somebody and then it'll tell somebody and then it becomes a he said, she said mm -hmm. con kind of conflict and then that turns into a bigger issue. So sometimes it's just better to either just pick who you really want to talk to or to just squash it all the way and leave it alone. Yeah, and that's a lesson everyone has to learn in life. I'm, the younger you learn it, the better off you are. The better off you are, yes. Uh, going back to what she said, I think that having a good communication with your teachers is also very important because we all have lives outside of school and sometimes our grades begin to fall and our teachers don't understand why and they st begin to think that we don't care when actually something's going on at home and they don't know how to address the problem because you won't let them know what's going on. And you know, that's so huge, that's so huge, um, because that's, that's why we're here, right? To figure out how ed educators can better help you. And it's true, if a teacher does notice, if they know you've always been an A student and all of a sudden they see a C or a D, I mean, it's two way though, right? So it's your responsibility to go to them and say, hey, this is what's happening, is there any way? I still care about this class, can I get some extra help? And it's, it's also their responsibility to come to you. It's, it's, it's very, very important. Um, yes, back here. <clears throat> uh, I think a big disconnect in terms of communication with other people comes in the form of social media. 
and it's kind of a he said, she said situation. So you'll vent your situation to Twitter or whatever. Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, everyone else is tweeting about whatever the problem is. And then all of a sudden, whoever you're talking about has like 12 different viewpoints of the problem. And then that creates controversy. Yeah. How many of you guys, and I just have to ask, are, how do I say this, feel some kind of way if you post something and don't get any likes? I mean, seriously. <laughs> and, and how many of you guys have posted something and gotten so many likes so quickly and felt really good about yourself the entire day? Right, so it does, it, it impacts your relationships, how you see yourself. Um, I didn't have to deal with that when I was your age. But, but what I will say is, um, yeah, face-to-face -face communication, there's nothing like it. If you don't get any likes, it's okay. It's all right, because really social media is to express yourself, right? We're just putting out there, if everybody loves it, great. If not, it's all right. The next post will get them, yeah. Um, just the relationships with our teachers. I know your network is your, your network, nah, your network is your network. Mm. So basically who you talk to, you're supposed to make connections with your teachers and stuff. So I try to make connections with all my teachers throughout the years. Like from freshman year, I still got connection with my teacher over here at the freshman center, and all the way up to the high school, I still got connections with my deans and my senior teachers. So, how many of you guys network? I'm not just social network, but network with people. Okay, all right. I'm fascinated when I hear that because I feel like if I had been more aware, and as a young person, if you are aware, how important, just like this young man said, those relationships that you have, the world is small. You never know who you're going to run into, and and who you're gonna need in the future or who might need you. So networking is very, very important. Do personal relationships impact your education environment? We had a young lady talk about kind of boyfriend, girlfriend. Is that an issue that affects your schoolwork? Mm -hmm. I'm working our microphones out. Thank you, however. <coughs> Well, I'm very involved in school and like mm -hmm. extracurriculars, and through that I've gained a lot of friends. And it's through those personal relationships where you are able to do your best work. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have formed a bond with your teammates, mm -hmm. or just like, you can, you know how to work with them in a project. Mm -hmm. So when you're working with your friends or with someone who even like maybe just is in a club similar to yours, mm -hmm. you know how to communicate with these people and you know how to work with them effectively mm -hmm. because you have made these personal connections with them. What about the person who's left out or isolated? Have any of you guys ever been that person or known that person? And can you talk about how that impacts someone who is just not included? Yeah. So if you're required to be kind of, as a, you know, from your facilitator, you're required to be kind of in charge of a group or something, and you get involved with somebody you're not close with, you're not best friends with, you don't talk to all the time, and they are kind of left out, and you see that they're left out all the time, it's kind of your job as a leader and as a, 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 a chaperone in your school to mm -hmm. kind of get that kid involved and maybe get personal with him or her. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say that you always have to be personal with somebody. You don't always have to like the person you work with, but... If you're going to be that leader in that environment, then it's your job to kind of make sure everybody's involved and pulling their own weight. Yeah, and how many times have we seen on the news that if there's been an issue at school, someone who comes to school with ill intentions, with ill will, wanting to do something, it's been that student who's been kind of isolated and who maybe was picked on, maybe was bullied. Yeah, we've got. Uh, kind of like what he said, um, like when you're doing a group project in school, you kind of have to be a leader and like for the kid that got left out let him kind of like join your group because if not maybe there would be like so many emotions running through his head like depression or sadness or something like mm -hmm. that that could cause him to go home and do anything really uh, so just to be as a team leader you gotta have to let him join your group and get to know him and make him like actually be his friend mm -hmm. so he's not just sitting there and like oh well nobody likes me or nobody wants me to be in their group to do something and do you guys know what that looks like, depression, isolation? Do you know how to help someone if they are feeling that? Okay. Um, 
just yesterday we had a meeting at our school, just uh, how social media plays a role in leading to teen suicide through cyberbullying or, you know, a few things like that. And I think that plays a major role because some people think that, you know, Twitter or Facebook is their social diary, so they have to put everything out there. Then when everybody finds out about every uh, tidbit of information, mm -hmm. they're kind of, you know, shocked. And so they start to, you know, act out or mm -hmm. do such violent things. Is bullying a problem or does the media just make it blow it out of proportion? Who says bullying is a problem? Show of hands in your school. You've seen it. You've experienced it. You've done it. Who says it's not a problem? Okay. You don't see it as a problem in your school. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I just want to say, um, in reference to anyone, it's you as the person who allows those feelings or emotions to get manifested and, you know, build up over time. You have to find a balance between your own feelings mm -hmm. as well as the feelings as of, of others. Um, you have to worry about yourself in order, and if you understand yourself, you're able to kind of relate to the person next to you. So mm -hmm. the feelings that you have for yourself kind of will reflect off of maybe how my feelings were for are for you or for you as a person. You have to understand yourself in order to understand others, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a great point. And I know that emotions run high at this age and stage, right? So, so how do you, if you're having, if you got dumped, if you're having a rough day, how do you guys, what have you learned about kind of redirecting that and kind of getting through that and getting back to the business of the books? I'm gonna let my microphone people. To talk about the bullying. Yeah, um, sure. I had lost a friend who um, was getting bullied at school, and she didn't know how. Like, she didn't have no one to talk to, and she was really feeling left out. To where she started doing bad things that she never done before. She was getting in trouble, and to where she was like, she wanted to kill herself. And you know, it's kind of it kind of hurts because. This person don't have friends to go to. She don't have nobody to talk to. And, like, she is just like she's lonely. Like, she wanted to, you know, be friends with somebody, and nobody wanted to talk to her and mm -hmm. all this type of stuff. So she, she took her life because she was getting picked on. She was getting called names. And, and I feel like bullying is it's a hurtful thing because you don't know. Like, the words that you say to people, it affects them. Like, it hurts them. Like, the emotions they have it really hurts them, so. So let's, let's, let's come together. Part of this is to create an action plan, right? What we can do, how we can take some things that we can actually do back to our schools uh, to improve the environment. What, what can we do about bullying? Whether you've seen it in your school, experienced it or not. Let's hear from, yes. Um, I don't necessarily have something on bullying. Um, I wanna hit back on a point uh, about relationships with like okay. peers and stuff. Working with your friends in school is good and all, um, but then again, you're not building those bridges with other people. So when you do get out into college and in the real world with your career, you're not gonna have your friends to work with. Mm, um, good point. I like, I like when our teachers pair us with people that we don't know, mm -hmm. that we've never worked with, so that we do get to build those bridges and we know what it feels like to make connections with other people. Very good, because that's the real world, right? Um, and so, so, I just want us to get a few things, that how ways we can address bullying, and then we'll, yeah, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to elaborate more on the problem of bullying. We yeah. live in a different world of bullying now. Like, it isn't, hey, shove the kid into the locker kind of bullying. That's, yeah. that's of the past. Um, it's, it's more hidden now. Like, it's, it's in social media. It's in the little things people say. Mm -hmm. You don't really notice it. It's not as prominent. And the people who are bullied don't really speak out that much. They don't speak out, so so then it's up to kind of other people, right, to see they you know they look troubled or there might be a problem or they didn't come to school today or, yeah yeah absolutely next to right next to him. Mm -hmm. Also, I feel like bullying is kind of promoted because some social medias let you go anonymous, so that's kind of like oh I I'm gonna say this to this girl and she won't even know it, so I feel like it's kind of promoted. Yeah, it's easier to do, mm -hmm. isn't it? Okay, anybody we haven't heard from right here first and then we'll come back. Mm -hmm. This gentleman right, right here in the sweater. Over here. Okay. We need that microphone, please. Thank you. Oh, um, I feel that you have to be careful with that because some people, they don't want you fringing on their territory. 
kind of way. And sure. If you come off a certain way, it may backfire on you. Mm -hmm. So I think you got to be careful with what you say mm -hmm. uh, with the person who's getting bullied, if they're getting bullied at so all. So what's the best way to do it then? What would you say? Uh, what's the first thing you would do if you notice the gentleman next to you looks like he's having a tough day? Uh, try to come up cautionary, I mm -hmm. guess, in a way, and see if there's anything you can do. And if it seems that they don't want to help, then walk away. That's mm -hmm. what I would do, because mm -hmm. I don't have any problems. But you wouldn't just let it go. You would actually uh, try to address it. Um, I think that's a tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't meant to be, but you're saying it depends on the circumstance? Is that what you're saying? Um, <laughs> if that person doesn't want it to be out in the open, then I wouldn't put it out in the open. Mm -hmm. I just see if I can help, and I think that would give myself uh, that I tried mm -hmm. to help them, because mm -hmm. they didn't want my help. Okay, all right, here in the sweater. Okay, and as we're getting to this green sweater, then we'll, yeah. Okay, so I think that we need more advocates mm -hmm. and like motivational speakers mm -hmm. to connect with children like who are being bullied and inform people like, like what bullying is. Very and, good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right, because it could look differently, right, depending on the circumstance. So to have people that come in and connect with young people and are an advocate for them, kind of like, a, are there a counselor? You guys still have school counselors, right, that you're assigned to? And you guys feel like you can go to them about things that are challenging? Okay, right here. We've got, oh, sorry, 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 before we leave, sorry. Um, I think that you can like start as many anti-bullying campaigns as you need, but that's been going on for a long time and bullying is still present. Mm -hmm. So until you create an outlet for those bullies to where they have something else to like let their anger out or may like maybe not social media, but like some kind of club that they can join to where they spend their time doing that instead of focusing on the negatives of others and fixing what is wrong internally with them. Very good. Okay, very good. So, uh, okay, next. At a bullying club, because hurt people hurt people, right? So if there's a way we can identify bullies and create a club for them, I think you could be onto something. Okay. Uh, I think as far as an action plan for schools for bullying, because the main form of bullying that we have today is cyberbullying, mm -hmm. it'd be really important for our administrators to educate us on like ways to avoid cyberbullying and like kind of the implications of what happens when you do those things, mm -hmm. because. I think a lot of people on social media don't realize that like, you can't see them face to face, but you have no idea how they're reacting to it. So I think it'd be really good to start out educating people. And I think that honestly, schools should be able to have some sort of power. If they see cyberbullying within their schools, then they should be able to take ac action against mm -hmm. it. Yes, and there is even software that's been developed to kind of monitor that, that sort of thing. So I've been told we have about 25 minutes left. Um, I think we're only going to 1 o'clock instead of 1.30, so we're going to go ahead and kind of move things along. Um, is there anyone else that just has a comment that has got to be heard about this? Okay, and then we're going to move on to decreasing crime in our communities. We've kind of touched on it with uh, school bullying because that leads to violence, but think about that as we take this last comment. After listening to everybody, I loved everybody's suggestions, and I'm part of the anti-bully crew at my school, mm -hmm. and as of yesterday, I saw this girl like crying in the bathroom, and I think it's our job to just go up to that person and just talk to them and have like a smile on our face and say positive things about that person so mm -hmm. they can overcome that darkness that they're going through, mm -hmm. because it is through bullying, and because people were spreading terrible rumors about her, and it was like a heart-wrenching story that she told me. Mm -hmm. But all I could do is just smile and tell her like how beautiful she was and that all of those are lies. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's our job to kind of rise above all of that mm -hmm. and show them that they're strong too. And that's what they need, right? To know that they're not alone, that they're not, they're not necessarily what everybody is saying. Let's talk about c crime in our communities. We had, uh, a record number of murders last year. There's a lot of different, um, there are a lot of different ways that the police, community leaders are working to try to make sure that you guys stay safe, right? But the challenge is we've gotta have everybody on board, right? That this is our community, that we protect each other, we respect each other despite differences. 
Um, what I want to hear from you guys are some ideas or some experiences you've had on how we can cut crime in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I've noticed, I have um, a good friend of mine who goes to my school. Uh, I know that like, like clubs and athletics, they really help pull kids out of you know, those situations. Like, you know, he was smoking, he was hanging with the wrong crowd, but we pulled him into you know, sports and it completely changed him. Like his grades increased, it, he changed as a World person. of difference, mm -hmm. right? because this, his sphere of influence was different. He was a part of something and he felt like he was being productive. And that's, that's a basic human need, right? To feel like you belong to something. Um, yeah, I've got so many hands up. I wanna get to, yes, and then you're back there, yeah. Um, sometimes it's hard for students because they'll go home to um, a household where there's no parents because parents might work just to provide for their kids. And so it's, it's a lot better if you're in activity or something after school to keep you out of trouble. And I think that can really help decrease the crime in our communities. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. You know, like you said, there's many different ways that we can decrease the crime rate in our community. Mm -hmm. But what I think that is the most important way and the most effective way is if we start with at an early age, if we start with the students, you know, the elementary, the middle school, and the high school students, you know, we need to encourage students to stay in school throughout grade school and even push them to go to college. Mm -hmm. We need to give them resources so that they may they may go out into the community and do resourceful things, mm -hmm. you know, and if. And we need to also like invite them to like take part in community service and not only like show them there's something else than just to take, you know, teach them how to give mm -hmm. and to help out. You know, if adults, teachers, you know, uh, supervisors, et cetera, don't like do these ways and other ways, mm -hmm. like students will have a lot of free time on their hand yeah. and much of it. And you know, that could lead to destruction and negative behavior and the increasing of crime rate. Yeah, and we've got the pastor of Light of the World Christian Church here with us today who had a lock-in recently. And there were more than a thousand kids that came out and just wanted something to do and a place to be together. And I think that sounds like what you guys are talking about is needed. Yeah. yeah like when decreasing the crime rate really is just knowing right from wrong at an early age. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, if you don't want to be that guy that you know announces to everybody that he, she's smoking or anything like that, you can anonymous, anonymously, you know, go get somebody help, and that can help increase, help decrease the crime rate at an early start. Yeah, and when you guys think of crime, what what comes to mind? Fighting. Fighting. You can just yell it out because I just killings, killing, killings, shootings, robbery, all these things, right? That's okay. So ways to cut crime. We just want to spend a few more minutes on this. Um, basically, I, what I think would be really good for schools to do is focus on the juniors and seniors because I don't think that schools realize how much that the freshmen and sophomores look up to what the seniors and what the juniors are mm -hmm. doing because to them, like, oh, that's what I'm going to be. That's, you know, and what the seniors are doing, mm -hmm. that's what they're like, oh, I'm going to be like them, so I'm going to do that. So if Got the it. seniors are, you know, smoking and, you know, partying and stuff like that, then it's going to make them feel like that's what they have to do to be cool. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if you know, schools focus more on, oh, you need to be a better influence for these younger kids, um, that would really make an impact in So schools. two different ways to approach it, when they're young so that they never get to that point, and also if they're older and didn't get that when they were younger. Yes, somebody I haven't heard from. Back there? Uh-huh. Keep your hand up so that they'll know where to come. Yeah, thanks. I think one aspect that could help all age groups is if there were more like community centers like YMCAs. Um, on the right here, I noticed that there's a, the Pike YMCA right down the street. And a lot of townships uh, and other schools, they don't have that. And I feel that like even though there are extra like curricular activities and clubs for students, after that, they might still go to a home where they don't feel worthwhile and having like YMCA's that'll create jobs for those kids and they'll feel like they'll have a purpose. So we need funding for our Y's, after school programs, extracurricular activities. All the, our leaders in the audience are listening. So yes, anyone else I haven't heard from yet? If so, we'll come back. Okay, go ahead, right here. 
Um, just one quick thing I wanted to say is I feel as if a lot of killing and crying that's going around in Indiana comes from a lot of teenagers, probably from the ages from 16 on up to 24. And I feel like that um, a lot of us in the same age group need to go out instead of hearing from adults all the time, instead of hearing from you know, a preacher, hearing from a community leader, come out to your peers the same age as you. We should go out and tell them. No, like if you hear from somebody else your age, it's going to mean a lot more to you than somebody way older than you that's, oh, I've been through this, I've been through that. Somebody the same age as you that can come out and actually say, this is not what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. This is not what we're supposed, this is not what we're supposed to live for. This is not how we're supposed to be. And I feel like that if a lot of us at the same age would go out and say that, go out and do that, a lot of crime would stop with the same people the same age as us. So a peer mentor group then to that's go right. out there and be active and and I think that's, Wonderful, wonderful idea. Okay, yes, and then we'll come up, come up um, here. Everybody's kind of talked about community efforts and people joining community centers and funding for the YMCA and stuff, but I think one thing they have to address is punishment. People see this on the news or on their social media that so-and-so did this but didn't get in trouble for it or didn't get as much trouble for it. So as somebody that would you know love to be a prosecutor one day, I think that you know stricter punishment is something that is really going to have to be looked at because mm -hmm. everybody's just going to say, oh, well, there wasn't that much punishment for it, so why not yes. do it? So when he's prosecutor, you guys better be doing right. Okay, and let's get this gentleman right here. I'm sorry, and then we, we've got to move on. I thought we were till 1.30, but we're only till 1, so. Okay, just to elaborate on what she said back there, um, I think it'll be great to have, like, instead of, like, older people kind of mentor the kids, it'd be great to have peers to do it mm -hmm. because if you have older people doing it, then you're like, well, I mean, he's old, you know. It's what not, does he know? What does he know? Yeah. But if you have someone you know, that's in the same grade as you, then you're like, oh, you know, I, 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 go, I, I go to the same school with that yeah. person. I'm in that person's math class. You know, maybe I should listen. Maybe we should do this together. I think it will be great. That is a good point. Just a reminder, though, we do know we were once your age, even though we're old now. We were. Okay, one last comment, because she had had her hand up for a long time. And then we're going to move on to traditional curriculum meeting the needs of a diverse student population. So I want you guys to think about that, kind of what you're getting in the classroom if it's meeting the needs of the population. Uh -huh. um, I think a lot of the crime usually starts from like when you're, or the people that you hang around with. Cause I knew um, a couple of guys that didn't, that were always nice and like, you know, never engaged in smoking or any type of violence. And then once they started hanging around, you know, the wrong group of people, they got this mentality that, you know, it's okay to, you know, fight at a public place or to cause other crimes. And so I really think that it's a matter of who you hang around with mm -hmm. and yeah. That group is so important because you're influenced by those people you hang around with. You ever heard birds of a feather flock together? Okay, so we're moving on to traditional curriculum and does it meet the needs and interests of diverse student populations? We have an idea right back here, yeah. Um, I don't think that uh, the traditional, lear traditional learning style meets the needs of uh, the tw our, us for the 21st century of students. So our, as we said earlier, social media and technology is our, the biggest thing for us right now. Uh -huh. And so traditional learning style is pencil, paper, and uh, a textbook. And a lot of students nowadays, I know, I don't like to just open up the textbook and read because I don't know the application for that in my daily life. How am I supposed to know what the a squared plus B squared equals C squared is going to do for me when I'm going to the grocery store. And yeah. so things like that, I think that um, we need to, the te as teachers and uh, educators, we, they need to be able to express to us what is it going to do for us in our daily life, mm. for us in our work experience, for us in college readiness, for us in many of the other things we're going to be doing in life because I know I'm not going to be in high school for the rest of my life. Mm. I need to know what's going to prepare me for my further life and for things that I want to do with my uh, education. Very good, making that school to real world connection, right? School to work connection. Mm -hmm. Oh, I also agree with her. Um, I feel like traditional education should focus more on what we do in life and what we want to do later in life instead of like learning about random things that we will probably never use. Okay, okay, very good, very good. Yes. Um, you said yeah. I shouldn't if I'm going to major in something totally different in college I shouldn't be trying to find the area of a rhombus if I'm trying to <laughs> do accounting you know what I'm saying so yeah I'm so so basically you guys are saying there's a lot of things that you're taught that you just don't need 
right? But how do you know what you need until you know what you're going to do? What, how, or, or how do you know you might need to help your son with that one day? I, I don't know. I'm just, just asking. Okay. Um, personally, one of the biggest things I'm concerned about is um, our way of teaching health education. I think that it mm -hmm. needs to become more modernized. And I think we need to focus a lot more on, like, I don't need to learn about club drugs for three years in a row. I feel like Is we Is that need what you learn in health? Yeah. <laughs> like, we learn about, like, PCP and stuff like that. Okay. So I feel like we need to make it, like, more appropriate for the age group, especially, um, like, a more specific sex education and just things that really apply to us and that we'll really need because a lot of kids my age don't know a lot of stuff about sex education that they should really do you be guys, aware Are you about. still watching the same film that we all watched? Do they separate boys and girls? Okay, all right, so updating that, making it more relevant, making it more user-friendly, okay. I think education should be more career-based so you can like explore what you want to do because like you said, you don't really know in high school probably what you want to do. Sure. So, like instead of teaching us about the rhombus, maybe you should teach us like what what learning about the rhombus what careers use that Aww. instead of our math and science teachers are saying no <laughs> right now okay right very very good points very good points and we've got one over here and then we'll get right here yeah okay back to how we were talking about the traditional classroom setting sure with like the textbook with the pencil and the paper mm -hmm. okay that works for some students but i feel like the teachers nowadays need to take into consideration how like we have these little distractions in our back pockets that we like have on us at all times. So I feel like that they should somehow try to incorporate that back into the education. I feel like that could really benefit our generation as a whole because like we were talking about earlier, we, we do always um, like find time for social media. So if your teacher has an assignment that like requires that you like look at look at some politicians Twitter mm -hmm. page or something like that like find this quote I feel like that would really help somebody or maybe if they like text alert you the square root of pi is you'll look at it and then you'll remember it okay I like that go ahead to elaborate what they've been saying on the rhombus a personal experience <laughs> poor rhombus at, yeah at tech high school we have a bunch of different magnets. We have a career technology magnet yeah. where you can go there and it's almost exactly like a college. You can pretty much major in what you want to do, but you also still have your core classes because you need your core classes. But you have a class basically, if you want to go into diesel, I mean, if you want to do some with cars, you have a class basically you're in for four periods. You can learn about cars, take mm -hmm. a car apart, and put it back together. Yeah. So there's a lot of And you can be job ready by the time you, can you get leave. The, actually, they have a program where you get a job right out of high school. You're making... Sixteen dollars an hour, right yeah. out of high school. Yeah, that's that's impressive. Anybody I have not heard from that wants to speak? Okay. I mean, I heard a lot of people talking about how, like, how are we gonna learn? Like, what are we gonna use this for, or whatever? Like, what I think school is for is like, what? Um, it's not always about you. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you sit in the classroom to learn about those kind of things because when you sit in that seat in work or whatever, then why are you sitting in there then, mm -hmm. right? Like, So you know. think it's, it, uh, what you're, you're making the case for, it's important to have a broad education. Yeah, like if you're not gonna, like if you're not gonna use those things, then what about when you are gonna use those things? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And I guess some, you guys are saying, well, some of the stuff we learn just, we never use, but you just have to know whether it's for I step or, right? Do you guys feel like we're, we're too much of a geared towards I-step education system? Okay, I'm veering away from politics. Let's get to the next comment. Um, personally, I do not learn in a traditional setting. I'm a part of a project-based learning community. So we focus on 21st century skills and at how to do those through our schoolwork. So we're still meeting the curriculum, but at the same time, we're learning maybe how to work with people you don't like, how to use your communication skills, how to present. So we're taking aspects you would use in any job field mm -hmm. and turning them into 
the things we have to learn in high school. And do you feel that's better prepared you, you oh, feel? Oh, definitely. Yeah, going from just sitting down and taking notes and then turning around and taking a quiz every Friday mm -hmm. to we have like three week spans where we have a project meeting a real world issue where we may even talk to real world professionals mm -hmm. and we have to, you know, we have a firing process. We promote like what you would actually do in a real life job field. How many of you guys, do you guys have innovation classes and kind of innovative ways to, to learn? It used to be like the gifted and talented or whatever would have special classes where you think and do projects. Is that more common now? Okay, uh-huh. Okay, so because BDU, Ben Davis University, is a college preparatory school, we have majors that are really realistic with life and technology itself. So for example, I'm in health career, so our teacher does go back on like, we'll need this stuff for life with anatomy and physiology in a doctor's room and she gives example and she shows us videos. And that, do you find that you remember those things and that you internalize them in a different way than if you were just kind of in a class and a teacher was lecturing? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, uh-huh, here. Um, I attend Warren Central and I feel like more schools just like BD and all the other schools around Indiana have the Career Center. Like we have the Walker Career Center and there's over 20 programs to the Career Center that focus on that career. Like I'm a part of the video broadcasting. Just like watching you guys, we do all this stuff so that when you go to college, you know the basics of it so that when you get your degree, it's easier for you. So I feel like that the standards that we do now based on like career classes and stuff that's going to help you and stuff that you're interested in is more beneficial to us now. Yeah, you guys will graduate college and take my job. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> and and I'm fully okay with that. Uh, yes, over here. Um, I think that uh, like most of the things we learn in school are kind of geared towards like standardized testing, like SAT, ACTs, not really like real world application. So it's like more you learn it, you digest it, then you regurg regurgitate it back out. Mm -hmm. Not really applicate, app applying it to the real mm -hmm. world. So like at our school, we have a SPAN program where we also go to IUPUI and we take uh, classes with like uh, uh, college students. So mm -hmm. like it was kind of difficult adjusting from like high school to the college it's thing. Different, yeah. a different environment, totally. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like changing your whole thinking from just learning the information and uh, giving right back out to more of a thinking about it and then applying it to whatever you're learning. Yeah, and do you feel like now you kind of take it for granted, I'm definitely going to college. Like, yeah. yeah, so it was right. more of a motivation and like sure. uh, preparing me for what I expect. Very good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure that throughout my whole high school career that um, I haven't done a project where a teacher hasn't provided a real world example for me and told me that I had to give a real uh, world um, solution to it. Um, in one of my math classes, everybody's talking about math and how people don't see it really. Um, I was in geometry dealing with like triangles and stuff, mm -hmm. um, talking about cutting down a tree. So you have the tree and then you have the ground and how it's gonna fall which would be a, um, like the hypotenuse to everybody. And so now like every time I go by a tree, I'm like, hey, I see that, like mm -hmm. it's stuck there because they gave me that real world application for me to apply it. Yeah, so it makes, it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. I think that there needs to be a balance between real world learning and things that you're actually gonna use in your career. Because just because you think you're not gonna use a science class doesn't mean you shouldn't take it. Yeah. Like I was on social media and someone was trying to sound s really smart, but they said that 9-11 happened in 2011. They huh. seemed to think that was a fact. And huh. just like simple things like sure, history, it wasn't just a unique. typo. Mm, no. no, it was like a paragraph. Long. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So, so you're you're right again, making the case for a broad education, meaning you never know when you might need to know what to do with a rhombus. Okay, any any anybody I haven't heard from yet who wants an opportunity to speak? Yes. I feel like in school, we learn about like, you know, one person is gonna maybe need to pay more attention like algebra two than another person because mm -hmm. of their, like what do they wanna do after high school? But I feel like we should learn more stuff about like what we're actually gonna be facing after we get out of high school, like, you know, paying bills and like getting a car because, I mean, if your parents don't teach you that, then who are you gonna learn it from? Oh, so. preaching to the choir. Right, exactly. So financial education, that's important kind of a life skills type class, how you make that transition when you're looking for an apartment, looking for a job, applying for college, those sorts of things. Yes. I think all this excess um, information that everybody's referring to, like the Pythagorean theorem, aren't necessarily yeah. there, 
for the f like for you to actually know the fact, but I think it's there for like brain stimulation and kind of trying to broaden your knowledge and your way of thinking. So it's not just you need to know Pythagorean theorem when you get older, but you need to know how to think that way when you get older. Yeah, yeah, yes. I agree with what the girl just said right now. Like I understand that we need core classes, but we have electives, and certain electives don't really matter too much. So I think we should replace those with like how to do your taxes, like stuff like that. So we actually. Kind yes. of know what to do when we grow and up. when you when you have that class approved for your school, let me know. I'll come over and take it with you. <laughs> yes. Um, like how they were saying about uh, how you don't need certain math classes and stuff, but some people like go to college and they still don't know what they want to do. Mm -hmm. So some of those classes could help you if you decide to do something different than you originally thought you were going to do. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Because education is a journey, mm -hmm. right? It's a journey. Yes. Um, I feel as if um, I understand how everybody is saying that I don't need to learn this because I'm not going to do this in college, but mm -hmm. you're not the only person also in that classroom. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you can't always be mindful of yourself. You have to always think about others, just like in geometry. I'm not as smart as the person sitting next to me, mm -hmm. but I still want to be in that class. I still need the curriculum. I still need the education because either way it goes, unless you're going to a trade school, if you go to a college or university, you're going to have to know this stuff because you're still going to have to take a basic math class your freshman year. Mm -hmm. So I feel like be mindful of others, not just yourself, because just because you don't have to take this class or you don't think you need this for your career doesn't mean that the next person doesn't need it for their career. Absolutely. Great point. Yes. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm sure we all been in that situation. We got to make our schedule for the next for the next year. And mm -hmm. then you choosing from all these classes that seem boring to you. And they're just of no interest. For example, like last year I had to choose my English class and I'm in advanced English and all of the English classes seem boring to me. But then when I got in the class that I picked, they changed it where the curriculum was more geared towards us, uh, it, talking about global citizenship and stuff like that. So I think choosing a class of interest, not so much of calling it an elective, mm -hmm. but just making it geared towards you. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. We are coming to the end of our time, but here's what I'm gonna do. I've been given 15 extra minutes. We have one more topic, so if you guys are okay, we'll use that extra 15 minutes. Okay, so we'll get one last comment and then we're gonna talk about, and we've kind of already touched on it, but are students being adequately prepared for the future, as is right now? And like I said, we've kind of talked on that, but we'll get your thoughts. Well, like, when we were talking about how we need more like core classes and stuff like that, there's classes that you have to take in order to pass high school, but like for science, somebody might have to take science and they might not like it because you know you just sit there look at a board and you're taking down notes but we should have more like hands-on classes where you go outside and you test stuff and then, cause you come to high school and they expect, you, well they don't expect it for you, but you have to kind of figure out what you want to do with your life. Mm -hmm. So if they have more hands-on classes and you're that guy that doesn't like science and you go outside and stuff, you're like, hey, I might want to major in biology now cause I yeah. really like this. Yeah, using it is just, it, it's different, right? When you have tactile learning experience, when you can touch it and try it and you seem to remember those things better than a lecture that I had in seventh grade. Um, so let's talk about being prepared. Are we, are, is the education system preparing you adequately for the future? Mm -hmm. I feel like necessarily no, it's not, mm -hmm. because we're not just going to use our education for the future. In the real world, like now, we're competing for jobs. We're competing for, for jobs with people from across like the country, mm -hmm. from other continents and stuff. And we need other skills in order to get the job. Like we need leadership skills. We need other trade skills, like going through life. We're not, we, we need to know how to um, change a tire, how to cook. And necessarily, I don't think it's like preparing us. It's, it's preparing us for the education part, but not the real world part. Very good. Very good. Yes. Um, to, piggyback, to piggyback off of what she said, um, it does help us. Like, obviously, when you're going to college, um, what you learned in high school and what you learned in grade school is going to be really beneficial. Like, you're going to know, like, basic math skills. You're going to know, like, if you want to study biology, you're going to know, like, basic body parts. But when you go out and try to get a job, you don't have those skills. You're not, like, you don't know how to be assertive. You don't know how to, um, how to take constructive criticism because you were coddled so much when you were in high school. Mm. There are so many people who, like, who don't know how to take the criticism that they get in the workforce because when they were in high school, 
like if, if, they, if they did something bad, there was a teacher who could always get them out of it. Like, I feel like there needs to be less of that. So you bring up a good point, system. which are kind of like non-cognitive skills, right? Those things that you don't necessarily take a class for, but those things that you need to know, how to be assertive, how to deal with criticism, what motivation should be and looks like. Uh, so you bring up a good point. Yes. Um, I have classes, um, I'm also part of the PBL um, the learning PBO? system, PBL learning okay. system as well as her. I have classes both in that PBL and then I also have classes that are just like a traditional mm -hmm. um, style. The traditional style is pretty much doing what um, other people have said. They're giving you the education, but I feel like the PBL is really giving people those skills that they're going to need later on in life. Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't really had a problem as far as getting those skills that I need because my facilitators have um, not really helped me get them. They've um, guided me towards that. Yeah, um, and it's more of a non-traditional yeah, type, type exactly. model. Okay, anybody else comments? Where's the closest microphone? There we go. Um, at Tech, I'm in a program called ECHO, where it's like the, the form of our, our learning. And in there, we do a lot of stuff like as far as we deal with communication skills, professionalism, work ethic, and stuff like that. So I feel like it's not always what you're learning as far as what's in a textbook, but how are you going to put it to use? Mm -hmm. And you feel like you're getting that right now. You're being adequately prepared. Yes. OK, very good. Yes. Well, I don't think that students are actually adequately prepared for life after school, mm -hmm. for high school, because we have to ask, are they college ready? Mm -hmm. And that really starts with high school and, and grade school in general. They're not, most students are not really put into challenging classes. Mm -hmm. They're put into regular classes and they're not put into like rigorous classes that will challenge them and motivate them to do better and to, and to increase their work ethic mm -hmm. so that they'll be ready for life after high school. That's a good point. Do you guys feel, by a show of hands, do you feel challenged by your schoolwork? Does anybody here not feel challenged by schoolwork? Yeah. Yeah. Right, so, so there are some, some of you who are, some of you who, do you go to class still? Okay, good, all right, yeah. Well, like, I know there's classes you have to take in order to graduate, but I feel like there could be like after school programs that can teach you how to buy a house or to do your taxes, mm -hmm. or how to finance you and your family when you grow up, because I know you gotta know about math and science and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but you also need to know about your future. Yeah. You guys are so much further ahead, I feel like, than, than my generation. Yes, back here. Um, I honestly just feel like we should like just take the classes that prepares us for what we want to do in the future, and sometimes mm -hmm. that's not offered to us. Yeah, so do you, how do you get that education then if it's not there? Do you go outside? Do you look for other opportunities to, yeah. to get it? Yeah. Okay. The question is, are you being adequately prepared for life after high school? I feel like we are, um, because at least at Warren Central, we have a program in the Walker Career Center called PFR and PCC. The PFR is Personal Financial Responsibility, and it's mandatory for us that we take it, and it's teaching you, like, the simple things, like how to write a checkbook, like how to get a car, like keeping mm -hmm. uh, insurance up and stuff like that. And then PCC is preparing college and careers, and it mm -hmm. teaches you, like, what do you want to do? How do you know if you want to do it and things like that? Very good. Here's what I want to do, because we have uh, like 12 minutes left. Now, whether it's on this topic or another topic that we've discussed, or maybe a topic we didn't discuss, I just want to give you guys the opportunity, this is Youth Speak Out, to speak your mind on whatever topic uh, as we have these last 12 minutes. Okay, go ahead. Um, I just feel like with the crime issue, as a team, most teams want to go out and dance and party and stuff. So why can't we just have like a safe environment where we can go to a party and mm -hmm. dance? Like not to be like we're violent, so I won't feel like scared. Mm -hmm. If I'm gonna get shot or something, yeah. I should have an environment where I can go out, have fun, dance, meet new people and stuff. Instead of just playing basketball all the time, you know, yep. you get tired of the same thing. Yeah, so you need a safe place where you can mingle with other people and not feel like you're worried about what might happen. Yes, yes. Um, I live on the Far East Side where it's been reported that it's like the highest crime rate or whatever on every news station. And I feel like our the main issue, like going back on uh, crime and de decreasing crime is guns. Guns give people too much power. Mm -hmm. Like you can get a gun license at 18. 
I'm 18. I don't want to have a gun on me. To mm -hmm. that, it gives people too much power. How many and of you guys know people with guns? Sorry, just want to. Okay. Uh huh. And that are your age. Okay. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, that that's what that was the main thing that I want to say. That guns yeah. give people too much power. Yeah. yeah. Right. We used to use fists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that old school? I guess so. To touch on the last topic that we were talking about, um, the students being adequately prepared, I, just to say from the school that I, I attend, it's an early college, and when we graduate, we get an associate's degree. So I feel like we're uh, really prepared for life after college because in some of the classes that we take, uh, econ, for example, they teach us how to do our taxes, how to, uh, to, uh, <laughs> how to con calculate the mortgage rate for your house, how to do the things that you're going to need after, after high school. And um, I think that uh, it needs to be taken on more uh, over the country. It, most, more schools need to take on the, that uh, early college feel because uh, I know a lot of people, those are aspirations for many people to go on to college. Mm -hmm. And if you're not ready or prepared, a lot of people drop out first semester of college because they take, they're like, oh my God, that was such a big of a challenge because they sure. weren't prepared after they left high school and they didn't know how much of a challenge it was gonna be. Very good, okay. So we're gonna wrap this up. If you guys can keep your comments to maybe 30 seconds or so, then we can get to more people, yeah. I feel that many schools don't have that challenge because many teachers are afraid or intimidated by many of the kids mm -hmm. because 60 to 7% of us are middle class or lower class and many teachers are higher so they're intimidated by our actions. Hmm. Do you guys feel that in your schools that teachers are intimidated by students? Just by a show of hands. Okay, I mean it depends on the environment, different schools deal with different things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to touch on uh, that question about uh, our students being adequately prepared. Well, I know a lot of friends from from other schools that all they think about is passing the class. You know, they're, they're not trying to ace the class. Mm -hmm. All they want to do is pass the class barely, you know, get C's. And that really reminds me of one of my friends He's uh, of a saying. He said, C's and D's get degrees, but they don't get J-O-B's. Hmm, that's good. That's good. That's very good, yes. We're wrapping up, 30 seconds, 30 um, seconds per comment. What I want to talk about is how life in general is something we're talking about right now, and life is living in full experience pretty much. You want to live pretty much day to day knowing what to do, and school is preparing you to do that. Um, depending on what you take is also like the rhombus. Okay, we're talking about the rhombus. Um, Beating up on it today. People <laughs> think they don't need the rhombus. However, there are some people that do need the rhombus because you might want to go into that field where doing being an architect, you might need that. You need to know how to estimate. You need to know how to estimate and get out of certain situations. Mm -hmm. Situations that you get into, like getting in car traffic jams, you need to know how to estimate the amount of time you might get home to get home to loved ones. You need to know all these things for experience. You cannot reach certain skills mm -hmm. without experience. Everything comes with experience. Very good. Yes, yes, yes. 30 seconds, guys, because we're running out of time. I want to touch on bullying for a second. Bullying. I oh. feel like, like, I honestly feel like it, it's going, it can't be stopped, it like, but if it is, like, it has to start with us, like, the person who's being bullied, rather than, like, other people who's trying to get in, because you can bully somebody, but you'll never know that it's affecting them, because you'll say something to somebody, and they'll laugh right, like, ugh, they'll laugh right with you, like, nothing's wrong, but in, deep down inside, like, it's hurting them, but nobody will never know, so I feel like it has to start with the person who's being bullied. Absolutely, and then we give them as much support as we can along the way, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can add on to the early, early college thing because most of my friends are so intimidated to go to like four-year college, eight-year college, and they're just like, that's so much schooling. But if we start it earlier, I feel like it's easier because not only do you challenge yourself, but you're going to get what you want accomplished in less time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So my comment is for the... Um, are students being adequately prepared for life after high school? Um, I think it depends on the student. Like, if nobody's gonna hand you opportunities, like, you have to take advantage of the opportunities that are given to you. Mm -hmm. Very good, all. very good, yes. Uh, to touch back on the crime situation, and when she said guns give people too much power, um, and I agree that guns cause a lot of crime, but a lot of times when you put those gun laws into place, uh, Chicago has one of the most has you know the most amount of gun laws, and it's still one of the highest crime rates because the people when you create gun laws, the people that break the laws with the guns don't abide by the laws in the first mm -hmm. place. When the NRA conference was in downtown Indianapolis, 
it was one of the lowest crime rates we've had in a lot in a very long time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm staying away from politics, so we're going to go ahead and just let's get this. We'll go right down that row. Okay. Um, talking about going back on the bullying, I don't think it's just a peer on peer situation, like helping out your peers. Our teachers are very involved in our lives, and they take a personal connection with us. And I really think that helps because if I walk into a classroom upset, my teacher knows that and takes the time to pull me out of the class and be personal with me, and mm -hmm. that really helps. Yeah, all the difference. All right, um, I believe that uh, teachers, that, um, since they were um, brought up being taught notebook and pencil, um, take a test every Friday and so forth, that they don't realize that we, um, we have technology. Um, I believe that teachers should start to utilize their technology more. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like students would be more attentive mm -hmm. in class if they use technology more often. Very good. Mm -hmm. And then we're running out, so this, we're going to get these on the back row. This is for the bullying. Uh, I think that, like the gentleman over there said, I, th I feel that bullying is just something that won't end because no matter what, people are going to talk about you. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you say that you're doing really well in school, you know, they're going to talk about you because you're too smart. Mm -hmm. So then you kind of dumb yourself down. They're going to talk about you because you're too dumb. So it's just, it's the thing about, you know, you as a person, mm -hmm. you know, you have to stand up and, you know, you have to be, you have to pick yourself up and, you know, brush your shoulders off mm -hmm. and you have to, you know, just take it. Sure. And know. for those who aren't bullied, try to be part of the solution as opposed to the problem. Okay, 30 seconds each. I want to speak on the crime. Um, I feel that a lot of young males, teenagers, um, are not getting a lot of love at home with their parents and fathers. And some of the males haven't grew up with a father or their mother in their life. So it's like, they only know of being in the streets. That's how being in the streets raised them. So they're thinking, well, I'm never gonna be nothing. Like there's parents that tell their kid, your young teens, male, oh, you're not gonna be nothing. You know, when they get that in their head, they think, oh, well, since my mama or my father tell me I'm not gonna be nothing, I'm gonna just go out here in the streets. And you know, when parents see their young male in the street, hearing them getting killed or getting locked up on the news, and they're wonder why my my son is out there is because you're not showing your young son or your teenager any love at home and they need that love from their parent because i understand that y'all said that we need to come with our peers that the people are our age but at the same time they need their parents mm -hmm. somebody to raise them so they don't know you know they need to feel that love sure. inside it's, of them it's different very good okay we've got time for a couple of more comments uh, back on the topic of bullying, I find that teachers sometimes misunderstand cues for bullying. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes in the classroom, they'll pick on the kid that's like sleeping or whatever, but that kid might be sleeping because like, I don't know, he's having some personal issues and mm -hmm. the, the teachers don't really stop to investigate. They just keep on picking on them. So. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yes. Um, this is back on the uh, topic of whether high school prepares you for after high school. And I think that it does have the... Um, it can prepare you better, but I think school has such a negative connotation with it. When you think of school, you think of homework, you think of staying up late doing it. If you change that mentality to thinking of opportunities, then school students would want to go to school and those opportunities will be there for them. You just kind of have to change your mindset about attending school. Okay, we've got time for you two, and then we're done. Um, is, is there anyone who has not spoken who is just going to go home and feel terrible that they didn't say anything? Because we've got two minutes left. Okay. Just these, where did the microphone go? Sorry, right here. Just right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I just feel like the biggest problem in our generation is that we don't understand that we don't know, like nobody knows what you, like their peers go through. Like, you can tell me how I look, but you can't imagine how I'm feeling, like, deep inside. Mm -hmm. Like, when you talk about somebody, like, what they wear, you, they may not, like, have a stable living environment at home. So, you know, it just goes all back to, you know, like, social media, like, classroom environment, mm -hmm. like, all that. Like, it all circles around that same thing. Did we have one more comment? Thank you for that. Do we have one more comment on this front row? I thought I saw a hand. Okay, we've got, yeah, one quick, and then we've got... I was just going to go back to um, schools do, I feel like, have the potential to give us, um, basically prepare us for our future, but um, back to the rhombus thing, I guess that's what we're calling it. Um, like, for me, like, I want to go into musical theater, and I know that's what I want to do, and if I wanted to get my, you know, education for, like, I have to do dancing and voice lessons and all of that, and I have to do that outside, plus all of this other homework that 
I feel like schools aren't, I don't have the motivation to do that. So I think for schools, maybe give like students more of a motivation and mm -hmm. like say, okay, well you may use this. So just like help with like motivating students to do that because I'm gonna feel like I don't need to do it because that's not what, I'm, that, what I want to do. Absolutely, you guys have been an incredible group of young people. I hope you guys feel like you were heard um, this morning and I hope that you guys take back some of the comments that your peers have shared and, and take them back to your school. You guys are clearly the leaders in your schools. We want to thank the lawmen that came, the preachers in the house. We want to thank the, um, our, our leaders, our local community leaders. Thank you guys so much for being here as well as the educators and um, Pike for putting this entire event on. We want to apologize to the rhombus uh, and hopefully, hopefully you guys will again just continue to go back and just lead your students into violent, I mean, in, into nonviolent, <laughs> nonviolent, lead your students against violence. You guys got it, right? It's been an hour and 15 minutes. And just create peaceful environments so that people can learn. Um, you guys will do whatever it is that you choose to do. I know that already. Um, I can just tell. So thank you guys so much for being here, and thanks for being a part. And we'll continue this discussion. At this point, we're going to sign off.